Alright, welcome to my first official affiliate stream, and I see people have been getting hit by ads already. <laughs> so thanks for, uh, you know, giving me like one cent, probably not even, like half a cent. But, as you can see from the title, I'm gonna go over SL Paper 1 from November 2019. And this is actually the older curriculum, so some things are actually not going to be part of the new curriculum. Uh, most notably is vectors. And speaking of, um, because I'm an affiliate, I have my own uh, custom emotes now. <laughs> so here it is, a confused frog. Hello, hello. But anyways, I'm gonna get through this, and I don't know if anyone's gonna need math help today, but if they are, you know, feel free to ask questions. But this is a paper one, by the way, so no calculators. And here we go. Uh, what is this? We have an arithmetic sequence, so that's some sort of pattern made by adding stuff or subtracting stuff and I know the second number u2 is 5 and the third number is 11 and then of course we need to find the common difference so luckily we have two consecutive terms in our sequence so the difference between them is going to be the common difference so that's at 6 any primers? not yet I just became an affiliate after Sunday stream, so this is my first official stream. And then we need to find the first term. Well, we have the second term, and we have the common difference, which is adding 6. So to get the first term, I'm just going to subtract 6, and then I'll get 1. So, well, negative 1. So u1 is negative 1. And then find the sum of the first 20 terms. Easy enough to do. Uh, we have a formula for that. Uh, luckily, I know this one off the top of my head. So it's 20 divided by 2. Do I know this off the top of my head? And then it's like 2 times the first term plus 20 minus 1 times the difference, 6. And then, well, I guess we do this math with a calculator. Negative 2. Man, 19 times 6. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is 19 times 6? That's 60 plus 9 times 6, which is, what, 54? So, 114? Maybe? I don't want to cheat and pull out a calculator right now. And then this will be 112, so you get 1120. And then I think that's it. Next one. I don't know, I'm pretty happy. I finally made affiliate. The hardest part, I think, was actually just getting the seven days of streaming, because I only stream like twice a week, so it took me a while. The 50 followers was pretty easy. The like eight hours of streaming was pretty easy. And then I think you need an average of like three viewers. And because of my first couple of streams had so many people, uh, the average is still above three but that's also decreasing rel lately. Do I get one cent per ad? So I, that's like two cents. That's pretty good, pretty happy with that. All this work I'm doing is paying off. 
Okay, what is this? Venn diagram. So we have a class of 30 people. 18 are fluent in Spanish. 10 are fluent in French. And 5 are not fluent in either. Okay, and then we fill out the Venn diagram. Okay, so there's 30 people, so let's keep that in mind. And right away, I know that there are five people that are not fluent in any of these languages. Sub button? Don't I have one? Oh, you're reacting to it. Yeah, I think there's probably one on my channel now. Okay. Wait, what am I doing? This is not five. People that are not fluent don't belong in the circle. Here. So that means that there are 25 people fluent in languages. Now the thing is, is that there's 18 fluent in Spanish, and there's 10 fluent in French, which is 28 people. So that doesn't make sense given that we have 25 people left in the class. And that means that there's just an overlap of three. So three people can speak both Spanish and French fluently. And then from here, it's easy to figure out the rest. Uh, there's 18 that are Spanish and fluent. And we know that three are also Span fluent in French. So there's 15 that are just fluent in Spanish. And likewise, uh, this needs to be seven because 3 plus 7 is 10. Okay, with that filled out, write down the value of Q, that's 5. Write down the value of N, that's 3. Write down the value of M and P. You should add stuff for your reward points. Like what? I'll look into it later. That's too advanced for me right now. Okay, number three. Interesting stuff. I'll look into it. I don't know. I'm worried that my custom emote is not enough of a draw. I was thinking about like, you know, what emotes would people want? And especially for a math channel. So I think the most common emotion is confusion. So then I just made this one real quick. I think it's pretty good, especially for a math channel. I do not want someone to draw me. I don't know. I was also thinking of getting, uh, you know, if I get actual subs, I can, you know, get another emote slot. And then the plan is to do like some, some knockoff, uh, knockoff pog champ. <laughs> but not for me. Can I draw for you? Maybe if you have skills. Okay, what is this? We got G, and then there's a point on G. And then we need to find the value of B. Okay, well, easy enough. This is X, and then this is Y. So then I can just plug stuff in. So this means that G of X is now equal to eight. And then over here, I have negative one squared plus B times negative one plus 11. So with this, uh, I can just solve for B, I think. Uh, let me just clean this up a bit. So negative 1 squared is 1, negative 1 times B is minus B, plus 11. 1 plus 11 is 12. If 12 minus B is 8, then B has to be Okay. Then I have
have the graph of f of x, and then that gets transformed into the graph of g, and then we need to describe this transformation. Okay, I know how to do this, but give me a second to think about how to explain this well. Okay. So g of x, they're saying, is a transformation of f of x. So it's in this kind of a format. Where a, b, and c, and d are your transformations. Now, because I know what x squared is, uh, I don't have to keep this in terms of function notation. This is a pretty interesting question. I haven't seen one like this uh, in a paper so far. So in terms of the function being x squared, it looks like this. Now this is very, very similar to standard form or vertex form, depending on, you know, where you're from. Plus, okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, what's the orange plush in the back if it's not Charizard or Charmander? Um, here, let me go grab it so I can show you guys that it's not Charmander. <laughs> so, do you see this face? This is not Charmander. Here's the tag. It's backwards, but it says, uh, what? Henshin, Metamon. So, not Charmander. This is actually, um, what's his face? It's actually this guy. Oh, and then here, let me show off some other ones. Here's Pikachu wearing. A little in, I think, Vulpix costume. And we also, I also have Eevee wearing an RK9 costume. Yeah, a little in Vulpix. It's like. This thing. But you see, I have the plushie of uh, Pikachu wearing a costume of it. I think I got that in Japan. Yeah, and then this one is from Okinawa which is also in Japan. Anyways, back to this. So if we were to compare the transformation of F, well, and then the vertex form of a parabola, I guess this, let's change this to H. Uh, yes, she is. I unfortunately don't have my own room to stream in. Maybe once I start making stream money, I can buy a house with a separate room. But anyways, okay. So there is a very strong similarity between the two. Now, something to note is that there is actually no B transformation, so we can ignore that.
and then that means that we don't have we don't need these brackets and then essentially c and d are your h and k so all we need to do is complete the square and then if i complete the square then i know what c and d are and then a is whatever a is why do i want a separate room just for streaming So anyways, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, G, which is x squared plus 4, or x plus 11. I need to complete this square. So that's easy enough to do. And then what you can do is some people teach this as like you create a perfect trinomial so then you got to take essentially half of this value which is 2 and then you square it and then you also need to subtract 4 because we can't just be changing it hello rgpt and then uh, don't forget the plus 11 on the side. So these three, if you were to try to factor them, uh, it becomes a repeated factor of x plus 2. So then that's where the little square comes in. And then these minus 4 and plus 11 make this. Flawless color transition. Harder than it looks. Are you talking about my hair or the colors I'm using on the screen? Green and blue? I don't see how it's hard, but sure. Uh, I'm using a tablet. So I bought this for stream setup. It's pretty useful. Uh, oh. Wacom tablet. But okay, back to this. So I know that this is my A value, which is 1. This is my C. And then this is D in terms of the transformations. Is it a cheap one? Because I've heard like the one that I bought, some people have been using for like 10 years and it's still pretty good. All right, so then what am I even supposed to do? I'm getting distracted. Okay. I need to describe the transformation. Well, I've identified what my transformations are. This is essentially a translation. left 2, and then up 7. What model is it? It's just an Intuos. Like... Like the most entry model. I bought it for like 100 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, using a tablet is pretty useful for teaching, especially compared to a whiteboard. Although, you know, like old school math teachers, they love chalkboards. I hate them. Milky, you, you have that for drawing? Why didn't you just let me have yours then? And then I didn't have to drop 100 bucks on this one. Let's see, Blackboard is the worst. I once had to give a couple lectures using chalk. By the end, you couldn't read anything. <laughs> yeah, they get so messy and so dusty. 
and like there's like that weird secret like underground market for like the really rare Japanese chalk that like all the college professors are hoarding. Bad for your lungs, yeah. Okay, let's see this. Consider uh, 11CA, which of course follows this formula. Find the value of A. Okay. So for those that forget the formula, uh, this is a combinatoric question. And here's the formula right here, I guess. Let me zoom in. So if this is n, and then this is r, then we have n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. Now, if we were to just plug in our values here, we have 11 up top, and then we have a, and then we have nine, right? So essentially what this is saying is that nine is the n minus r, and of course we know n is 11, so this means that r is two, or sorry, a. Yeah, let me plug in the actual, okay, n, n minus r is nine, and then n is 11, and r is considered a, so a is two. You snort it? explains a lot. Okay, and then, hence or otherwise, uh, we need to find the coefficient of the x to the power of 9 term in this binomial expansion. So if we were to just even follow the general uh, term formula, Uh, this is what we have. Now, of course, we want to find this for the x to the power of 9 term. So what that means is, of course, this needs to be 9. And if that's 9, well, oh yeah, and then this is 11. then basically, again, we have the same implication that we had here. And we know that r has to be 2. So our coefficient, which is the numerical part of this general term, is 11c2, and then also the 3 to the power of 2. And this is a paper one, so I guess I have to calculate this manually. So according to part A, this is 11 factorial divided by two factorial divided by nine factorial. And factorials are easy to simplify, especially if you have one divided by another, because the smaller one is going to divide into the larger one. So 11 factorial is 11 times 10 times 9 all the way down to times 1. 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, so I'm going to leave it as 2. 9 factorial is 9 all the way down to 1. So as I was saying, the smaller factorial is going to divide into the larger factorial. So what am I left with? I'm left with 11 times 10 on the top, which is 110. 2 on the bottom, 110 divided by 2 is 55. And then you can't forget that there is a times 3 to the power of 2. So then we got to multiply this by 9. All right, what's the cool fact about factorials? You can define it in real numbers, 
and even in complex numbers. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. I don't think the rest of the people in chat will understand, but that's weird. Oh man, and then they make you do 55 times 9 in the middle of an exam? All right. So what is this? 450 plus 45? 495? 4.3 factorial is a real thing? Okay, so here's the coefficient, and then I'm curious about this. I've heard this before, but let's see. I wonder if these things can even calculate using non-integer. The answer is 24? Oh, they just take it as 4. Oh, they don't do non-integers. Oh, well. Oh, you, yeah, 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 the gamma function. Wikipedia, the gamma function. Neat, fancy maths. Oh, Maxime, thanks for my first subscription. <laughs> I don't have time to type it in. Do I? I succumb easily to peer pressure. But I'm also really lazy, so if I can't find it... Oh, okay, never mind. I got a link. Okay, gamma function of 4.3. 8.8. Wow. Amazing. Gamma function of a complex number. Another complex number. Congrats on affiliate, thanks. Thank you for subscribing. You've unlocked my custom emote to spam in chat. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Number five. Complex convex geometry. Hmm, sometimes I wish I carried on with advanced math. But at the same time, I'm making money now as a teacher. Yeah, good emote. At least I think it is. Alright, what do we got? Yeah, I admit it's cool. I think that's pretty interesting that, like, factorials can be extended. I'm a nerd? Well, I mean, yeah. Okay, what is this? We have a function. I got a derivative. And then I need to show that the derivative's discriminant is k squared minus 16. Easy peasy. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, so here is your a, here's your b, and then this entire thing is c. I wonder, is there a non-nerdy math teacher? Like, aren't you just by default nerdy? You're not a nerd? You're in! A Twitch chat about math help talking about how cool the gamma function is. Who are you kidding? <laughs> what is considered a nerd? I don't know. It's pretty a uh, pretty general term nowadays. 
Jiraiya hands? Oh man, you're a weeb too? Weebs are so cringe. I mean, like, I'm a weeb, but I would never admit it. I'm like barely a weeb compared to back in like high school. You're very uncultured in terms of anime. I don't know. If anyone in chat's willing to give him a recommendation. An entire race? No. Weebs are not Japanese people. Like, to me, a weeb is someone who wishes they were Japanese. And like, hi Jazz. And they like worship the Japanese culture and they just like turn a blind eye to all the bad things about their country and there are bad things there's bad things about every country that's what a weave is to me and that's pretty cringe yeah Japanese wannabes super cringe Okay, let me clean this up. <laughs> and then now I have the weaves in the chat acting up. Look, it's okay to like anime and like manga, but like, you know, don't be cringy about it. Weebs rise up. <laughs> oh, I thought. Oh, when you were doing Jiraiya hands, I thought you were trying to do like a, like Sharingan or not Sharingan, Sh uh, Razingan. Have I ever told you guys? I went to an anime convention once. I actually still have my uh, entrance pass. And, you know, I was like, oh, it's gonna be cool, you know, I'm gonna see like merchandise and things. But man, the people that you think you would meet at an anime convention are exactly the people that go to the anime convention. <laughs> it was really, really cringe. Uh, like, there was actually a, a like nerf sword fighting contest, and then I joined it. Just to see like how it was and man it was so cringy i wanted to leave so like people are holding their swords like in reverse grip and like doing like anime poses and they have no idea how to use like an actual weapon um whereas like i took a little bit of fencing so i knew at least some basics of like stabbing people but man, that was really cringe. Everything was just cringe about that entire convention. We ended off the night with like a like a like a music dance rave, and that was really bad, really bad. Anyways, did I go to the to the hentai section? There's no hentai section at the anime convention. Like this is open for all ages. Anyways, I'm not gonna bring the pass to work ever. And then I would subscribe, says Jazz, but Prime is lame. Yeah, it's okay, you don't have to subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Okay, I finally simplified this, and then I'm done part A. So part B. F is an increasing function. 
Find all the possible values of k. Okay, if f is increasing, then let's just see what that means. That means that your derivative is positive. So this entire function is positive. And then we need to solve for k. So this is not enough information. Hmm. Let's see. Why'd they ask about the discriminant? I feel like we need to use part a. This is positive. Oh, okay. If this is positive, then that means that it can't be equal to zero. So, can't be zero. So if you think about that, that means that it can't have any solutions. So, the discriminant here has to be negative. So can't be zero, so no solutions. In other words, your discriminant has to be negative. Oops, negative. Uh, they do for the higher level. This is a standard level test, so I don't need to worry about complex numbers and complex solutions. Okay, so then if k squared is less than, well, k minus 16, k squared minus 16 is less than 0, then of course that means k squared needs to be less than 16. In other words, uh, k has to be, the absolute value of k has to be less than 4. Or, you know, other ways to say this, it needs to be in between negative 4 and 4. In uh, interval notation, or if you want to be really weird, there's this interval notation. Oh yeah, how was your teaching on Monday? You were, you needed us to hype you up on Sunday. Was it everything you hoped for? It was fine. Apparently I got hyped for being good among students. Oh. But last semester I got terrible reviews. Wow. That's just the nature of teaching. Just some people really don't like you sometimes and then some people love you other times. Happens to everyone. As long as they don't email you, you don't care. Okay, let's look at this. I have a trig function with a specific domain. And then I need to find all the values of x so that the function is greater than this value. Okay, so let's just combine those two facts together. I have my function. And I need it to be greater than 2 root 2 plus 1. Oh yeah, Jazz, you don't have any questions for me? I figured you would. Okay, well, the plus ones will take care of themselves.
Do you have any questions? Oh, you're eating. Okay. Oh yeah, and then I was talking about how it took me a while to get affiliate and the the bottleneck was I streamed twice a week. And like I don't intend to stream like full time cuz you know, this is not my job. But my schedule actually says sometimes on Tuesdays, but I haven't done Tuesdays yet. But I was also thinking, well, you know, this is Twitch. So what would people think if I actually played video games on this channel? <laughs> now, obviously the don't taint, taint the channel. Yeah, but like I want to play video games sometimes. Like just in general. So why why not just stream it? Now, like, I don't, my particular games that I play, I'd want to keep it within the theme of the channel. So the closest thing would be like puzzle games. Anyways, I'm just isolating for a cosign right now, for those that are wanting to watch this for the math content. And then once we reach this part, uh, we need to find out when cosine is larger than this value. And this particular value is, you know, is related to special triangles and the unit circle and whatnot. Uh, and basically, this means that you have a reference angle of pi over 4. Because if this is 1, then each one of these is 2 root 2. No, I was thinking puzzle games like... Like Portal. Portal 1, Portal 2. I've actually never played them before. And they're like, you know, within a similar vein as math, like logical thinking, right? I've heard, all, I've also heard good things about, uh, like, Baba is You, which I want to play. And like, part of me also wants to do this because I'm like, fairly frustrated with streamers playing these games. Or just any games in general, because like, they're really dumb. Minecraft speedrunning? A really good game is League? I don't want to play League. At all. I have no desire to want to play League. Do whatever you want, I support. Thank you. So speaking of cringe, that's why I actually never played Portal. Because when it first came out, it was like, you know, critically acclaimed. But then there was like a... Like this really cringe following for it like all these people like quoting like a cake is a lie and all of that stuff and it actually made me want to avoid it and that actually happens to like a lot of things that i try to be interested in they just have like a really cringy following that puts me off of the actual like product let's say like case in point uh jojo Man, the, f the fan base for JoJo's is so cringy. Anyways, okay, I want to find out when Cosine is... No, not JoJo Siwa, it's an anime. Uh, I need to find out when this is larger. So, I just found out where it's equal to root 2 over 2.
The real question is, did you watch Demon Slayer? I read the manga. I watched... And then it was good. And then I watched the first season. Well, there's only one season right now. And then it exploded in popularity. And, like, again... I think the fan base is, like, really cringe about it. Like, they're, they're like, touting it as, like, you know, one of the greatest animes of all time. And it's good, it's solid, but it gets carried really hard by its animation. Yeah, definitely overhyped. Oh, thanks Eva01. I worked real hard to get here. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I found out the reference angle, right? And then you need to realize that, of course, there's always, well, not always, but there's two solutions to where cosine is going to be root 2 over 2. Does this just normally happen that a staff member just checks in with new affiliates? I have no idea how it works. Ah, I see. Okay. So I'll probably never see EVA01 again. Oh, speaking of overhyped anime... EVA's trash. Oh wait, hold on. Oh yeah! Oh! I know who you are. <laughs> huh? Anyways, how are you doing nowadays? So we have a positive cosine here, and then you need one here. So of course the second answer is right there. And this is happening at 7 pi over 4. Say hi, I will. Anyways, so basically this angle inside your cosine. Oh, the missus is in the chat, so there you go. You, <laughs> you don't remember who this is? Uh, so this angle inside the cosine, right? Uh, this is equal to our two possible solutions. So x over 2 is equal to pi over 4. Or it could be 7 pi over 4. No, Eva works for Twitch. That's why he has the staff uh, s symbol. Now, of course, this is uh, a specific solution. And then if you scroll back up to the actual question, it gives you a domain. So there are going to be uh, more than a couple of answers. Yeah, long time ago. So we do need the general formula, which is 2 pi plus n. And then n is an integer. Oh, thanks for the Prime subscription. <laughs> uh, that's my first two subscribers now. Okay, and then, well, of course, we're not even done yet because we haven't solved for x. So I'm going to multiply each one of these guys by 2. Once I can get this going. So I got x is pi over 2 plus 4 pi, multiples of 4 pi. 
or it's going to be 7 pi over 2 plus multiples of 4 pi. Okay, and then we just keep adding 4 pi until we are out of our given domain. So here are my answers. Obviously these two are in the domain. And then let me just write the upper bound, or let me just write the actual domain right here. Okay, given that the maximum is 6 pi, I know for sure that I can add I can add 4 more pi to the first answer, so I can do that. I'm pretty sure I can add it to the second answer as well. But let's see, pi over 2 plus 4 pi, well 4 is 8 over 2 as a fraction. So then I have 9 pi over 2. And then let me see if I can keep going. So if I add 4 pi to the second solution, then I think this works out, right? 15 pi over 2? Wait, but 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So this is technically 7.5 pi, which is out of our domain. So no, it doesn't work. So here are my three answers. And then I think that's it. Excellent. Found animal? Thanks. Okay, let's see this. Uh, we have two normal distributions in terms of X and Y. So x is normal distribution, has a mean of 14, and a standard deviation of a, so this is x, and then y has a mean of 22, and it has the same standard distribution. So because they have the same standard distribution, uh, they are exactly the same shape. Just one is at 14 and one is at 22. And then I need to find a B value so that when X is larger than B, this is the same as the area for y being less than b. So these are exactly the same area. Let's see. Oh, and this is b. This is a pretty, wow, the questions in this paper are pretty unique. I think this is the last paper of this curriculum, so IB just wanted to like throw everything they had at the poor students that had to write this exam. Doesn't this just have to be the number in the middle of them? Um, they already changed it. They changed it last year. And 
They made it a little bit easier. The one in the middle? Yeah. So B has to be the middle of 14 and 22. That's so dumb. They need to add pure math. Yeah, I don't know why they have this entire statistics portion in, in IB. I hate statistics. Eva, do you remember we took that one statistics class with what's his name? I hated it. Just for one course. Yeah, it was stats. It was, I hated it. I hate stats. <laughs> it was, oh, it wasn't stat, it was probability. But it had stats in it, of course, because it's about probability. 218 and I think it was a 300 course with like Angel or something. He had an accent. It was hard to understand. And he kept talking about random things and it made the whole thing confusing. Yeah, it was it was hard, but I don't think it was hard for because of the math. I think it was hard because he just sucked at teaching, to be honest. Now that I look back at it. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I think, yeah, given the symmetry of this, it has to be the middle number, 18. Alright, so then, let's do part B. And then, uh, Smexy Beast, thanks. Okay, now we know that if x is greater than 20, our probability is 0. 0.112. Teachers should know about stats for grading? Yeah, a bit. Man, some of them follow some like really arbitrary rules. It's crazy how bad their practices are, especially in university. Alright, so what is this? Let's draw a picture. Um, if x is greater than 20, and x is the one with the mean at 14, so this is a probability of 0. 0.112. And then we need to find the probability of y being less in between 16 and 28. So y was centered around 22. So let's use the fact that these two are exactly the same size of normal distribution because they have the same standard deviation. And then again, I found out earlier that we have, they have 18 in common and so two spaces this way is 16. So this probability here needs to be 0. 0.112. And then I need to probably find the other side, 28. So I guarantee that this is probably designed that, well, okay, 16 to 22 is what, six units? So six units away here is 28. So this is also the same probability. And 
and then we want to find the probability that it's in between. So all of this stuff, right? Well, that's easy enough. It's the probability of the entire thing, which is just one. And then you just take off the green parts, right? So we just have one. And then we take away two of the point one one twos. Two, two, four, and then why do they make you subtract this with a calculator? What is this? Six seven seven? Seven seven six? I don't know. Someone check with a calculator. I don't really care. And then okay, we're done this question. All right, what is the mo the motto of uni is it's not the teacher's responsibility. Uh, I can't talk right now. It's not the teacher's responsibility for you to learn. You're an adult, so if you don't learn, that's on you. Some profs follow that and others don't. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. But like you know how some people just some profs bell curve or they just have like an arbitrary like grading practice where, you know, the if an A is like say for example 90%, then that means like no matter the scores, the top 10 percentile are always given an A. Like there's some profs that do that and that's ridiculous. In math they don't ever curve. Maybe if, at your school. But I don't I don't want to say that's at every school. I mean, it's really easy to not curve in math because of, you know, how objective everything is and how easy it is to convert things into a, like, raw score. But, all right, what is this? I got a box and then it has these dimensions. And then if I add up the length, the width, and the height, it's 12. And then I need to write y in terms of x. You definitely got curved? Yeah, I feel like I got curved at some point. I love math so much, I get a number as a mark. Yeah, but I mean, I don't get what you're trying to say. Anyways, pure math isn't curved, you suck at it, then you drop out at my school. We get like 150 first years and honors, and maybe only 5 to 10 people left in 3rd and 4th year. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's like medium fish, small pond, you know? Like, you're... As long as you have a semi-decent memory, you can get a very good mark in high school math. And it's like so inflated the grades, and then you think you're super good at math. And then you go, Psh, okay, I can do honors math in first year. And then you sign up and then you realize like you're in over your head and that you're maybe not as good as, at math as you think you are. And then of course by fourth year, who's left? Like there's not that many math graduates per year. Cause who wants to do, who wants to have a math bachelor's degree? Yeah, honors math is wild. I took a couple of honors courses and it was, I wouldn't say it was fun.
real probability? I don't think I took that. Basically, if you don't have an honors degree, grad school is not an option in Canada. I'm not surprised. But to be fair, if, you know, you're on your pathway to becoming a doctor in math, then you should have taken honors in your bachelor's. Anyways, what is this? I know that the length and the width and the height together are 12. So this is 12. And then I just want to write an expression of y in terms of x, so that's easy enough. I just change this equation into, what, 12 minus 4x? And even with an honors degree, if you're not at like 3.7, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to think I was good at math. And then I took honors. And then I realized I fell into the first category, which is like, I just have a very good memory, so I could get away with like high school math. And then one of my friends, he's, he did his bachelor's at Caltech. And then that really put things into perspective for me. He's a monster. And he's on his way to getting his doctorate. I don't remember exactly where he is right now. But you know what? He's a little bit socially awkward. Actually, more than a little bit socially awkward. So I would like to think that that's the trade-off. And I'm okay with where I landed. Decent at math, but at least I'm not super socially awkward. Anyways, let's see. Volume, right? Find an expression of volume in terms of x. So volume is length times width times height. So that's what? 3x times x times y. And then in part a, we know that y is 12 minus 4x. Canada's pure math standards are actually quite a lot higher. Compared to the states, you mean? Yeah, but are our standards as high as like, you know, Caltech standards? Okay, so probably around the same. Sure, you have more experience in this than me. Assuming you go to a decent school. Well, apparently I went to a, de I went to a decent school. I don't know if it was decent for math though, but I feel like it wasn't that good for math. So here's my volume, and then I need to find the derivative in terms of with respect to x. So easy enough to do. reminded of that meme it's like but in terms of what you're talking about it's like Canadian math students are the most powerful in the world <laughs> oh my first actual math help question of the day how do you solve for x and y in these equations Okay, so let's uh, pull out and an... 
go to a different slide for this. So what do we have? We have two equations, right? 3x squared minus x minus y minus 2 equals 0. 6x squared plus 4x minus y equals 4. Okay, so there's a few ways that we can do this uh, found animal. So I need some context. Are you allowed a graphing calculator? All right, see ya, Eva. Thanks for coming by. You're allowed a graphing calculator, actually? Okay, so let me show you how to do this if you have a graphing calculator. What you do is you go to your graphing calculator. You type in your graphs exactly as you see them. So here's your first one. You type in your second one. So if, assuming I type these in correctly, then the solution to your system is their intersections. So right here, and then there's one over here. Now I'm going to assume that that's probably not how it was intended to be done. So let me show you a way that you can do this without necessarily using a graphing calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a substitution. And the easiest thing to isolate and substitute for is we are going to substitute for y. So in either equation 1 or 2, because they're both very easy to isolate for y, uh, I'm going to do that. So for example, I'm going to isolate y for equation 1. And that's easy to do because if I just uh, add it to the other side, then I'm done. So then now, what I do is I just take this, and then I substitute it into the y in the second equation. So what I get is 6x squared plus 4x. Subtract all of this stuff that I got from the isolation. And that just needs to be equal to 4. And you know, this is useful because now I don't have a formula with two variables, it just has one. So this is solvable for x. Uh, we just need to make this look a little bit nicer. So 6x minus 3x squared is going to be 3x squared. Uh, 4x subtract a negative x is going to become 5x. And then you have subtracting a negative 2, which is plus 2. Hello, Oliver. You commented? Thanks. And then we have basically a quadratic for x, which you should be able to solve. Uh, I'm going to set this equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract the 4, and then I'll get negative 2. And then once you're at this point, you can try to solve the quadratic. Uh, quickest and easiest way is using a quadratic formula. Your name's not Oliver? Well, your username has Oliver in it. Oliver Meme Say. 
feel free to type out the phonetics if that's not how I'm supposed to say it. Anyways, found animal, are you still around? Uh, so I'm gonna use the quadratic formula to solve for my x's. So that's negative five plus or minus uh, the square of five, which is 25, minus four, I'm just gonna write this out, times a times c, divided by two times a. So let's see, this is going to be, what, plus 24? So this is square root of 49 and six. Anyways, they should make pure math in IB curriculum. And then that would mean people would get through the undergrad more easily. Yeah, but there's a lot of demand for us teaching a lot of things to teenagers, and I don't know if just saying that would be conductive to anything besides like more people complaining about what we should do in the school. So then from here, we have plus or minus seven. So we get two possible solutions for x. And then two over six, which is one third. So found animal right now, we found our x values, negative two and one third depending on if you're adding or subtracting seven. And that makes sense, right? Here's that negative two, and then the other solution was over here at, you see, one third. So now that we have our x values, we need to find, of course, the y value that accompanies it. So I'm gonna take this formula, right? And then, you know, you just plug in your values to calculate x. So, of course, you do this one, and then you do the other one, and then you have your pairs of answers, which will end up being exactly this x and y, and then this x and y. Yeah, so hopefully everything makes sense. Uh, I did most of the work, but you can just do this last little bit on your own, if that's the case. Anyways, back to this. Find dv dx. Okay, I found dv dx. I just took the derivative. And then part d, I need to find a value for x, which is a maximum, and then I need to justify my answer. So I'm going to do these together in one instead of separating it. So a maximum, of course, implies that we're looking for where our derivative is zero. Okay, what is this flirting in my chat? You guys do this on your own time. And this is pretty easy to solve. We can just factor some things. And from here, you can just see what your solutions are, right? You got zero and two. Yeah, you're back. 
ready to ask math questions because your assignment is due soon. I see. Okay, so we have two critical points and we need to find out which one is going to give us a maximum. And obviously it's not going to be zero. Honestly, we shouldn't even consider zero. Because, well, x is the dimensions of a box. So if x is zero, you don't have a box. So realistically, our only option is two, but we still need to justify it because as it stands right now, I mean, it's pretty intuitive, but you can't just say for sure it's a maximum. It could have, it could be a minimum. And then there's two ways that we can do this. We can do a first derivative test or a second derivative test. I'm going to do the second because it requires less plugging in of numbers and calculating. I'm going to find the second derivative because that's fairly easy to find given I have this. Here's the derivative, right? And then if I evaluate the second derivative at 2, Then I get negative 72. Is this true or false? Why does that look so weird in the chat? Stop spamming symbols, man. Uh, Nightbot is very strict on spamming. Hold on, let me <laughs> go open up Nightbot and change the settings. Because I know I put up excess symbols and stuff and repetitions because for those that were here during the first one, my first stream, it was a shit show. So hold on, let me disable these. Okay, it should work now. Yeah, like I thought about a Discord, right? But someone needs to moderate that Discord. Okay, Max is gonna make a Discord, but who's gonna moderate it? Remember, this is attached to my name. So if someone opens up that Discord and it's a bunch of like, you know, bigot stuff, then I'm on the hook for it. Okay, hold on. There's been a lot of questions. Um, Oliver asks, I know this isn't on the re-quiz, but can you explain the rectangle question on the quiz? This person is asking again. Well, not again, but this is like, this is giving me some plate of kimchi vibes where they're asking questions about the re-quiz. Suspicious. Okay, hold on. Let me finish this question off first. Let me finish off this question. This is negative. So negative means that you have a concave down. So therefore, x at 2 is a maximum. Is this plate of kimchi's second account? Man, and it's so obvious. So, like, you know, the next day, the kid comes in for his requiz. And I'm like, oh, hey, name, how are you doing? And then I was like, or should I say, plate of kimchi? And then immediately the student goes, no. <laughs> Which is so obviously you, because if you didn't, if it wasn't you, then you would, you wouldn't respond as no. You would just be like, what the hell are you talking about? What's plate of kimchi? <laughs> <laughs> oh man.
<sighs> oh my gosh, step on my knee. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but I don't want to step on anyone's knees. But anyways, might as well ask you more questions about the quiz instead of saying no. <laughs> oh man, it's so funny. Like, uh. Okay, let me ask, uh, answer Jazz's question. True or false? So we have natural log. We have a few. Okay, hold on. Let me start from the beginning. We have natural log of A, and then this is multiplied by 3B, and you need to see if this is equal to 3B natural log A. This is the first one you type jazz. I'm just typing it exactly as I see it. Then you have log AB2, whatever that means. And then is this equal to log AB2? B2, then you have natural log 3AB, and then this is equal to B, natural log A plus natural log 3. And then you had natural log of XA is equal to A plus natural log of x. Okay, I'm leaving. What? <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyways, uh, what is this natural log a, the 3, and lo natural log x to the power of a? Wait, so you're talking about this one, right? This is to the power of A. And then this one is to the power of B. Yes. And then these ones are the way that I'm looking at them, right? Yeah. Wait. Is Oliver still here? I was just joking. Wait, Tofu Char. Tell Oliver to come back. Okay, so this one is obviously true. It's multiplication. All you did is you just moved this to the front. So first, this one is true. And then for this question here, Jazz, is this in brackets or like what's going on with this one? This is a little ambiguous, the way that you typed it, so I don't know how to answer that one. In terms of this one, we just use our logarithm rules. So we have a multiplication. Oh, log base a of b squared. So log base a of b squared. Anyways, Tofucha, are you there? Let Oliver know that I, w I was gonna help, but you know. And the second part is log base A B squared like this. So they're asking this, right? Okay. Okay, so let me continue this one. Uh, we have a multiplication, so we can use like, you know, log rules or log laws, and we can split this up into natural log A plus natural log of A to the power of B. And then we can use another log law, and then we can write this exponent as a coefficient. So this is B natural log A natural log three. So this one should be true. Uh, 
this one is not true because if you're going to use the uh, exponent, it becomes a coefficient, right? So it's not a plus, it's a times. So, so this one is this one is false. And then this one is ambiguous, but I'm going to assume that this 2 is supposed to be for the b squared. And if that's the case, then this is, this is false. For, for similar reasons why this one is false. So there you go. True. False. I'll move the falses over here. So there you go. These ones are false. So I'll change them to green. It says at least one is incorrect, and that you only have one more one more attempt, or was that the last attempt? Okay, double check that I have written everything properly. that I'm not missing anything. Everything's right? Even this one? Because this one was kind of weird. Are you sure this wasn't an exponent? The 3b? That's why. Uh, this one is false. Because this exponent is not inside the logarithm. If it was inside, then it can become a coefficient. But this is an exponent of the entire log. So this one is false. Okay, uh, I don't know if Oliver's here, but I feel bad because I was trolling a bit too much. So the question was, you have to explain using slopes why a proper rectangle's diagonals are never going to be perpendicular at intersection, perpendicular intersectors, intersections, intersect perpendicularly. So if you were to properly label the dimensions of a rectangle, right? Then let's just call this one like y. And then these ones are x, right? So if I want to show that these diagonals are not going to be intersecting perpendicularly, then I should probably find the slope of both of them. So, so the slope of this diagonal right here uh, we can find it using these measurements so this slope is y over x. And then if we want to find the other diagonal, the 
This red one. Well, the vertical component is still Y, but we're kind of heading in. If you started up here, you're going down. And the horizontal component. is still x. So the slope of this one is negative y over x. So you can see they're not perpendic they're not going to be perpendicular because the slopes are not negative reciprocals of each other. So there you go, Oliver. I'm really sorry. Well, not really, but you should have just stuck around for a bit. Can you swear? Maybe. Well, there you go. There's your answer. And then here's your answer. So if you're still not here, hopefully you can just visit this video later for it. Anyways, let me finish off this question. Find the max volume. Okay, easy peasy. I just found out where it's going to be the maximum at 2. So let's take my volume formula, right? And then I'm going to just plug in 2. So it's 36 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 cubed. So this is 36 times 4 minus 12 times 8. And then RGBT is helping out Jazz in the chat, so I don't have to. Okay, and I really don't want to do 36 times 4, so let's see what I can do instead, if there's any cheats. Not really. Alright, here we go. Uh, 4 for something. 1? One? 144? And then this one is what? 96? I don't trust my 36 times 4. But whatever, we're going to keep going with this. So, and then you do this subtraction. Oh gosh, what is this? 48. So this is the max volume. Two more questions. Question nine. Oh, this is about vectors. So vectors got removed from the SL syllabus. Oh, oh, I missed it. Nathan followed a minute ago. Thanks, Nathan. So I don't know if I want to do this because this is no longer part of an SL curriculum. I'm going to skip it for now. So let's see, we have g, which is p to the power of x plus q, and I know that the point 0 and a is going to be on g, and then f is the inverse of g, and then point b is, a reflect, is on f and it's a reflection of point a. So the coordinates of b 
Well, because it's an inverse, then you just switch the coordinates. And then, let's see, L1 is tangent to the graph at B, given the tangent slope at the x value of A. So then this is the tangent slope at the coordinate B is 1 over natural log P. Find the equation for line 1 in terms of x, P, and Q. Okay. So I know that line 1 is going to be y minus 0 times the tangent slope and then x minus a. So this is point slope form. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear this music, but I think Eva commented on it, but I actually really like this song. Did you get it right, or did RGPT get it right? Okay, so then this will simplify into 1 over natural log P, x minus A. Now the issue here is uh, I need it in terms of P and Q. And I have A. So I need to write A in terms of P and Q. Uh, so let's see. Well, P and Q show up in G, and I know that if I plug in zero for X, I get A. So in other words, G of zero, which is equal to A, is P of X, well, P of zero, plus Q. So A is 1 plus Q. So going back to my linear equation. I do a substitution and I guess I should make this look a little bit better. And then there we go. We have the equation of line one in terms of P, X, and Q. And then let's see. We have line two. So this is a tangent to graph G, this one. And they, oh, they already give you the equation of the line. We also know that the line goes through this point. And then we also know the normal is this. So then we need to find an equation of L1, which was this answer, in terms of just x. So I need to know what P and Q are. And then that's why they tell me all of this information here. Okay, so let's see. So this is the slope tangent slope and I know and I know line 2 goes through this point right here so okay we'll work with this later right now uh, this is jumping out at me first 
This is the tangent slope. This is the normal slope. So they are going to be negative reciprocals of each other. In other words, uh, if I take, that means that natural log of P is the negative natural log of one third. So again, if I take the negative reciprocal of this, which is this, that should be the tangent slope. Okay, so let's take care of this negative so that we can equate our natural logs. And what I do is it becomes a power of one third or an exponent of one third, which is just three. So this means that I just found out what P is. P is three. So currently what I have is I have this equation, natural log three of X plus Q plus one. So this is line two. And then I know this point is on line two. So I'm just gonna take my X's and Y's and I'm gonna plug them in. And then that should allow me to solve for Q. Okay, so let's see, I subtracted one, and then, well, why don't I just do this? So here's Q. I don't know how nice and simplified they want it to be, but there it is, that's Q. And then I have P, so now, I want to find equation L1 with no more P and Q in it, but that's fine. I just found out what they were. So I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to replace my values. basically done. Okay, Jazz needs help again. I just finished, so I can take care of this one, I think. And I'll guess, and I'll give you less shit for it than RGPT. Don't answer it. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, Maxime, didn't I tell you about my new rule? Anytime a student asks me whether or not I've marked their quiz or test, I add three extra days of waiting before I look at it. So you've just added three days. Okay, so apparently you've done a question like this, Jazz. So let's examine what this represents. So this is the angle for a triangle. with an opposite of 5 and a hypotenuse of 13. So if you just visualize this, this angle with an opposite of 5, hypotenuse of 13. So for the sake of completing the triangle, uh, let's use, you know, Pythagoras, and then you find out what this is. And I think this is a triple, so then this is 12. But you can always just check yourself, right? 13 times 13 is 169. We're going to subtract 5 squared, which is 25, which is 144. So it should be 12. Okay, so let's examine what this question looks like now. It's cosine 2 theta, where theta is this angle that makes this triangle. Are you following so far? And what this 2 does, yeah, I know it's different than the first question you did because there's a 2, but this is just an identity. Yeah. Can you send me an email with your profile pic attached for the Discord? Uh, yeah, maybe later, after the stream or something. <laughs> Alright, and then this, you can find out. You should be able to find out what cosine theta is because you have a triangle and then you just square it you times it by 2 and then you subtract 1 yeah she's a good student don't give her too much trouble jazz you gotta remember rgpt is taking out all of his stress on you because he doesn't like his students Okay, oh, I'm done the paper. So I did skip this one, which is a vector one. And vectors are no longer part of the standard level curriculum, so I won't do it. <laughs> so let's see how well I did. I don't know what's up with your connection. You keep like having a bad connection. Alright, let's see how I did. Is the common... Is the common difference 6? Yes. Is the first term negative 1? Yes. Is the sum of 20 terms 1,020? 
1,120. Yes. Nice. Full marks. Is Q... 5? Yes. Is N... 3? Yep. And then M is 15 and P is 7. Nice. So two questions in a row. Not bad. Okay. Find the value of B. I have 4. They have 4. Uh, oh, this one was a really interesting question about the transformation and how vertex form is actually the transformations, so you need to complete the square. So I said the transformations are left, 2, up, 7. So the question says left by 2 and up by 7. Very good. Okay, next one. Find the value of A. So I said 2, and they say 2. Hence, find the coefficient. So I think it's this little circled answer right here, 495. And they have 495. Oh, Milky, where's your friend? Why is hentai a permitted term? I don't know. It's not really a swear. It just means like pervert in Japanese. Okay, uh, show the discriminant is this. So you just plug it into the discriminant, which is exactly what they do. And then you just show it. So that's good. Okay, we're not getting into a hentai discussion here. Okay, oh, and then this was the other interesting one. Well, actually, was it? A little interesting. Given that f is increasing, then you need to be able to realize that that means it can't be zero, so your discriminant needs to be negative. So anyways, uh, I gave these various answers, and then here they are. So that looks good. Are you proud? I'm always proud. Okay, what is this one? Oh, this one was... You needed to solve the equation. So if you scroll down, I got these three answers. And here they are. Same ones. So we're good. We're doing good. Oh, limits are fun. Oh, and then this question. This is where Eva chimed in. Can't believe I got visited by a Twitch staff member and they didn't even hook me up with like special Twitch privileges. How do you know if a limit is infinity just by looking at it? Like Like, if you have a particular limit...
Something like this, right? So this is going to go to infinity. And don't mind RGBT, he is talking in like three levels deep that you don't need to get to. Okay, so if the limit as x goes to 2, so if x goes to 2, then your denominator is going to approach 0. So essentially, you're going to be taking 1 and you're going to be dividing it by smaller and smaller numbers and they're even being squared so they're gonna be very small so if, so what happens is this I don't think this is one you should always have to think about it when starting off and we know that if we divide by small numbers like close to zero numbers, then the value of the entire fraction uh, is large, quite large. So you can just see this on a table of values, basically. So if x is 1.9, right? Then x minus 2 Actually, let's uh, start on the other side. 2.1 is close to 2. So x minus 2 is 0 0.1. x minus 2 squared is 0 0.01. 1 over x minus 2 squared is, I think it's 100. And then if I get closer to zero, I mean, if I get closer to two, then their difference is 0 0.01. If I square that value, it's 0 0.0001. And then if I take one and divide by that value, I get a fairly large number. So you see, this is getting big. As this gets closer to two. Likewise, if you start on the other side, which is, you know, something you need to check for limits, it's the same thing. You will also get big. Yeah, so limits being towards infinity generally happen because of a division by zero. So you can see that as x gets closer to two, you're going to have a division by zero. Musa music? I thought it was. Oh, I thought you were talking about Goldilocks today. I thought you said Goldilocks was gonna be here, not another friend. Okay, back to checking my answers. So I had, what, two distributions? And then, given what they said, we deduced B should be in the middle of 14 and 22. So it says right there, recognizing that B is between 14 and 22. So 18, which is what I got. And then we had to do a little bit of picture to understand what this is asking. And I got 0 0.776. And they also have 0.776.
I just explained this to her, RGBT. <laughs> okay, and then part A, uh, or well, question eight, which I think is this one. So write down an expression of y in terms of x. I think that was this right here. And that's what they have. And then find an expression for v in terms of x. So I got this. They have the same thing. Find dv dx, same thing. Then the next question is find the maximum. So you set the derivative equal to zero, and then you get two. I have two. And then you have to justify. So they do the same one as me. Um, second derivative is negative. Therefore, we have our maximum. And then we substitute 2 into the volume equation, and you get 48. And I have 48. Nice. Uh, this is the vector one that I skipped, so we'll just skip that one. And then part A should be A and 0. So they have A and 0. And then question B is find the equation of L1, which I remember is this right here. So here it is, which is what I have. And then let's see, uh, then we tried to find p, and I said it was 3, and they say it's 3. And then we tried to find q, and I said it was this thing. And they also say it's the same thing. So then they do a substitution, and then they end up here. And we also end up in the same spot, I think. Wait, something is a little off. Did I not substitute this correctly? I did not. Oh man. So this is subtract a minus, so that should be a plus. So this should be a minus two. Dang. I have yet to get a perfect, perfect mark. I think I lost one mark. But overall, pretty close to a perfect score. And I give myself a big fat 7. IB score is 7. Okay, let's see. Jazz asked the question. So, let's see. We got limit x goes to seven from the left side of one divided by x squared x plus seven. Okay, so this is an aside, but if you're trying to find a limit, if you can plug in x with no problems, you should, because that's essentially what the limit would be. But obviously, if we try to plug it in here, you get a division by 0. So that leads to some issues, right? Now, 
let me talk to you about one thing before we talk about this one. We're going to talk about an easier limit to observe. Because it's basically the same question, right? If I'm taking my denominator, which is x, and I'm observing the limit as it approaches 0 from the right side, uh, then what I can do is I can pull out a calculator and then we just take values, right? So like what RGPT said, what if I take 1 and then I divide it by 0 0.1? I get 10. And then I take 1 and then I divide it by 0 0.01, something closer to 0 now. I get 100. And then, you know, hopefully you can just observe. As you get closer and closer to zero, you get a larger and larger number. So we can confidently say that this limit will go towards infinity. Yeah, and then this is where this part two comes in, and this will answer your question. Now look at the issue if we approach 0 on the left side. What numbers are on the left of 0? Those are negative numbers. So if we were to put this into a calculator, we get the exact same large numbers, but now they're negative. For example, 1 divided by negative 0.1. Now you get negative 10. 1 divided by you know, 0 0.0001, but negative. You get negative. So when we approach from the left side, it becomes negative infinity because you're dividing by a negative. It's one divided by some negative number. The answer will be negative. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you go to a graphing calculator, right? You see this on the graph. So you see when x approaches 0 on the right side, the value goes to positive infinity. However, if you approach 0 on the left side, it goes to negative infinity. So hopefully that makes sense. So going back to this question here, we first need to look at what happens to the denominator. So because of this factor, we know that the entire thing is going to approach zero. So are you okay with that part so far? If I approach negative 7, this factor approaches 0, which means that this entire thing approaches 0. So I'm taking 1, and I'm dividing it by something that approaches 0. OK, so that means that I know at this point that it's going to be an infinity of some sort. And the issue is we just need to know if it's going to be positive or negative infinity. But that's just easy because that's just knowing how integers divide. So let's look at this. This is positive. x squared is always positive. Now the thing that's going to determine if your infinity is negative is this factor right here. So if I am approaching negative 7 from the left side, then you need to think about what x plus 7 is going to be in terms of being positive or negative. So give that some thought and then 
let me know what you think you think it's gonna be. Meanwhile, RGBT says, Epsilon is a good way to approach these things, highly underrated. Yeah, Epsilon's nice. It took me a, a while to get used to it, but I like the small number way because again, it's intuitive, like you're saying. Yeah, but no one cares about rigor, except for math people. It's important for some students to learn. MHZ Nariman. Thanks. You think it's going to be positive. Okay, so... Why do you think it's going to be positive? Do you know what numbers are on the left side of negative 7? And do you know what happens if you add those numbers to, to 7? What the result would be? This is to the left of negative 7. Remember, we're doing negative 7. So this is negative, so you have a positive number divided by another positive number and a negative number, so the result is a negative. So this particular left limit is to negative infinity. And you can always just check your answer on a graphing calculator, right? So this is what, x squared? x plus 7. So you see, uh, here's 7, negative 7, and then you see the graph to the left of it, it goes towards negative infinity. For, unless they change the curriculum a handful of times, which I'm wouldn't be surprised. Epsilon Delta is not in the curriculum. Proof by induction is still in there, but Epsilon Delta, they might just pay it some lip service, but it's not like I don't think it's in the curriculum anymore. It might have been. I hate Epsilon Delta. It takes so long to just even get used to it and to understand what it even shows. And you know, if you're coming from a standard high school curriculum, it's pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, if you learn formal logic, yeah, look at me, RGBT, I know all sorts of fancy math. And now everything's just baby, baby stuff. But you know, take it up with the Ministry of Education. Yeah, I know that stuff. But I would say that, you know... I 
I mean, it would be nice. And yeah, all, a lot of mathematical proofs rely heavily on predicate stuff. And, you know, contrapositives and equivalent predicates and whatnot. But for someone that does not teach that, right? Which is, or it's for someone that has not learned that, which is a lot of people, they get shown Epsilon Delta and they're just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah, I know you won't struggle, but like I said, take it up with like your local uh, provincial ministry of education. <laughs> yeah, Delta Epsilon was hella confusing. I'm gonna deny what you're trying to say. Don't use the R word. Yeah, well, you need to use it in a proper way. Like, don't use it in such a derogatory manner. Even if I wasn't on a school stream, I don't, I don't like using that word to imply negative connotations. Karens, go for it. I don't care about Karens. Karens are, Karens are annoying. Anyways, Jazz, how many more questions you got? Cause I'm done doing my paper. So if you need any extra help, you better get it in soon. You have eight more? When are they due? Direct substitution. Saturday. Let's see. Found animal has another question. I need help with a word problem. Can I type it out? Yeah, of course. Hopefully, it can translate well into the chat. I really started to understand Epsilon Delta after we talked about sequential characterization of limits. And I think 3Blue3 three three blue, 1 Brown has a decent video on Epsilon Delta proofs. But yeah, I got pretty scarred by Delta Epsilon way back in like first year honors. Because again, I had no formal logic education and then they just threw it in for us to see. Yeah. The, edu the education system's not great for a lot of reasons.
Anyways, so while we're waiting for bound a found animal to type out his question... Oh, well, Jazz just asked the question. How do you do limit x to the 4 and then you have all of this stuff? Yeah, like, formal logic is not difficult, and we're, it's, it's odd, because it's actually in where we are, it's kind of part of the curriculum, but it's not in the, like, highest tier of math. It's actually in, like, the second tier of math courses that we offer, where they deal with, like, contrapositives and stuff. Okay, so I think this is the question that you asked. And then before I found animals, question gets lost in the chat. Let me just read it. So you have a 2,015 meter tall mountain. Nunavut. Very specific spot. And then Stuntman decides to ski off it. Height h meters of the stuntman above the ground t seconds after skiing off the mountain is given by this equation. And then this represents the height of the stuntman before he opens the parachute. And then we have a second height equation, which is after he opens the parachute. And then how many seconds does the stuntman free fall before he opens the parachute? Okay, hold on. Let me reread this again. So you have this mountain that's 215 meters high. Is this physics? This totally seems like a physics question. And then he skis off the mountain. And basically, like, your two equations that you have are negative 4.9t squared plus 215, or 2015, and then negative 10.5t plus Okay, so you have two equations here, and you should generally know the shape of each one of these. This one's a parabola. This one is a linear one. Uh, the parabola is going to open downward, and this one is a negative slope. So I'm going to change this to a different color, actually. So what happens is, you ski off the slope in the shape of a parabola. And if you were to keep going and you don't open your parachute, then you're going to hit the ground here. And then, if you do open your parachute, you have this graph. 
Now what this graph is, is it's a ooh, line with a negative slope. Like this. So because both of these represent the person, the only place that the place where you open your parachute is right here, where they intersect. So in other words, uh, found animal, like I'm assuming this is all from the same chapter, you are trying to solve this system essentially. So we want to find the t-value where they intersect. So again, there's a few ways that you can do this. And you can either graph it, or you can do some sort of substitution. So if we were to do a substitution, these both represent h. So I can just substitute this h with this expression from the first equation. And then here, I can try to solve for t, just like what we did earlier. Um, I don't remember where I wrote it, but you can collect everything to one side, do the quadratic formula, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, slightly cheat, and I'm going to use the graphing calculator. So let's type the first equation, which is negative 4.9. And then I'm going to type the second equation. Okay, and then these are in like the 2000s, so I gotta scroll up, scroll up pretty, quite a bit. Honestly, I'm just gonna change my window. So I'm gonna change this to 2020. And this does not need to go to 800. I just Google, or like I just search stuff on YouTube. Today I searched relaxing Nintendo music. All right, so found animal, are you watching? This is the path if you don't open your parachute. This is the path if you do. The only place where you're going to be able, where you're going to open it is here. So you see this T value is 15.6 seconds. So again, you can either use quadratic formula on this stuff, or if you have a graph, then you have your answer right away. So hopefully that makes sense. And then question two is just the follow-up, right? What height above the ground was the stuntman? So if you have the T value, right? Then you just plug it in for T to calculate the height and then you're basically done. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful though, because H might represent two different things. Uh, H represents the height of the stuntman above the ground. So luckily for us, we don't need to do any extra special math, I think, because question two asks for the height above the ground. So anyways, so you find the H value, we already found it in our graph though, it's 815.7. Yeah. 
So, yeah, here you go. Anyways, Jazz, did you ever figure out this one? Did RGPT help you? And then... Okay, so let's go back to this one. So essentially, right, if you give this some thought, um, you have 1 over square root 2 minus some sort of infinity. And this tells you nothing. So we do need to manipulate this in a way so that this won't be a problem. Okay, never mind. So this is like an infinity and then another infinity, even worse. So I think I saw his comment. He said you need to manipulate this so that it's not going to become an issue. So do you recall anything that you could do? Do you have any strategies of what you can do? Okay, so we have a subtraction of fractions. They have different denominators. So it would be nice if they had a common denominator. <coughs> so this is something that we learn in high school, but normally we don't use it this way. And remember difference of squares? How you can factor this? Anything is technically difference of squares. They're just not nice squares. X minus 4, I can factor into square root of X plus 2, square root of X minus 2. And this is really nice, and this is kind of like a, a sign that you were supposed to see because they have a common factor. So what I need to do to add them together is the first fraction needs to have the other factor. The plus x square root x plus 2. So now, let's look at what your fraction will become. Kind of. The difference of squares is the conjugate stuff. And yeah, you're multiplying by the conjugate here, but I'm not actually going to multiply it out. It's better to keep it separated. You're using big words again, RGPT. Okay, 
Dom Sonetti, thanks. Okay, so Jazz, hopefully you're following. I'm just doing basically some fraction work, right? I factor this as a difference of squares. I have a common denominator so that I can add them together. And then plus two minus four is x square root x minus two. And then what's nice is, well, you have a cancellation, right? This cancels with that. So what you're left with is you're left with this. Now, typically these, like any type of limit question where it's not like a, like an analysis question, basically you need a way to find, you need to find a way to plug in this number. So you need to get rid of any divisions by zero. So if you notice, when we do all this manipulation, my leftover, like what's left over, no longer has a division by zero if I were to plug in four. So now I can actually evaluate my limit by plugging it in. So you get one over four. And then again, RGBT is giving you some advanced advice, right? So you can always use the lower order to divide the higher order. And then this is something you can do when you have polynomials. And like he says, big sentences do not equal big words. But you probably don't understand what he's saying. No, we do. Anyways, your other question. No, we do teach it, we do. Uh, no, Jazz was in IB, and IB doesn't do long division of for polynomials in the standard level IB curriculum, so don't worry about it. Anyways, what is this question? Is it a limit? What, am we, what are we doing with it? No, you didn't. Yeah, well, you must have been in what they considered higher level. Standard level, you know, they don't teach, they don't learn certain parts of the curriculum. Anyways, Jazz, what am I doing with this? This is the question, right? Oh, thanks for the bit. Show us some magic tricks. I have the perfect magic trick. <laughs> later. Uh, anyways. What was I going to say? Where are we? Limit to one. Oh my god. It's the legend. Plate of kimchi. Oh, 
I messed up the first command. That's all. Okay, so again... You have an issue, because you're going to divide by zero. Yeah, no worries, found animal. You too. Uh, I'm assuming that you, Jazz, do not know... this word yet. Anyways, do you guys notice how Plated Kimchi is telling me when he's going to do the requiz? As if he knows that I know who he is. Ah, <laughs> oh, so funny. You're a boomer in his eyes. Anyways, yeah, so you don't know this, so don't worry about it. So again, uh, we're not going to use the same techniques, but it's the same strategy. We need to find a way to essentially cancel out this denominator so that we don't divide by zero. So... Remember you talked about the conjugate? That's not a bad start. So why don't I multiply this by the conjugate? Whenever you see like, uh, you know, something minus another minus a square root, just do it. And I'm not saying it's right, but I'm this is my gut instinct. So let's see what happens. And because, you know, ideally the denominator, this part is going to cancel out, I'm not going to multiply it together. I'm going to leave it separated. However, what's going to happen is I'm going to multiply this out and I'm going to play around with it. And I'm going to see if I can get this to cancel out with something on top. So we're going to expand this out. So we'll do this slowly. Square root x times 1. That's square root x. Square root x times square root x. That's x. square root x, oops, no, not square root x, negative x squared times 1 is minus x squared, and then one more time, you get this weird square root x, x squared thing. I do. Jazz, no real names in the chat, regardless of whether or not that could be that person you're mentioning. You expose it yourself. Why would you sign up for Twitch using your real name? Anyway, so we're here, right? And, oh man, this is kind of ugly. So let's see what we can do. Hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, well, RGBT. This is so sad, I don't get anything. Need to go back to data buy. <laughs> uh, those are dark times, and we don't talk about them, Dom. Do I add my students on social media? I do after they graduate. I'm not going to add my current students, but I add them to keep in touch with them because it's nice to see what they're up to. I don't upload too much anyways. It's mostly just like me cooking. Yeah, and that's why you don't have social media, because no one would care about your social media if you just upload math. Yeah, you don't post, but then you follow. Okay, so you see, Jess, I'm trying to get this to show up so I can cancel it out. And I'm going to play around with it because I'm not exactly 100% sure how this is going to work out. So I see from this one, I can factor out a minus x squared. So this gives me a 1 plus square root x, although that just kind of undoes the multiplication that I did. Yo, check Twitter. Twitter? Did you tweet something at me? Let's see. I signed out on my Twitter and I forgot to log in. So I am not going to check my Twitter right now. I'll check it later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cat hospital. Okay, for functions with are usually periodic, this is the case. Uh, yeah, I'm a little stuck right now. This is where you type it into symbol lab <laughs> and just figure it out. Okay, let me get rid of all this extra stuff. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I need to see the original. Yeah, practical situation, photo math, you know? Did I try plus one, minus one on top? No. Oh yeah, I guess I could do that. Yeah. 
That mm, looks like it could work. Okay, so jazz again. These are all like very specific like strategies that depend on the setup of the question. But you see this is like two thirds of a quadratic norm or trinomial. Yeah, they're so obscure. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to factor this, you know, like a normal factoring. And I'm trying to get one of the factors to be one plus square root x. So what RGBT is recommending is I'm going to add 1 and subtract 1 to the top. And we're going to see what happens when I do that. So I can do this because again, that's just not changing anything. What does this do? Uh, we are going to rearrange this. And I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm going to put the one, the plus one, together with the x squared. I honestly vaguely remember this, so tell me if I'm going in the wrong direction, RGBT. Because I think this is it. I'm doing fine. This is a difference of squares. I hate all these obscure, like, little techniques here and there, you know? Yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It should work out. So I've made a difference of squares. And then remember how I told you how there's like obscure difference of squares? Like this is technically a difference of squares. I'm going to do a difference of squares on this right here. I hate these problems. Like they're so stupid. And So you see, I've made the difference of scores here, which is good because now this is showing up. And then what I'm going to do is this one out of these two terms, I'm going to factor out the minus. So now it becomes one minus square root X. So I did two things, right? I did difference of squares here. And then I rewrote this as minus this. And then the reason I needed this is because now this finally cancels with these, and then this becomes one. So we can finally evaluate our limit. And I can just plug in one into here and here. So you get 2 times 2 subtract 1. So the limit is 3. Yeah. 
Yeah, probably. Okay. So let me know if that's right, Jazz. Why do you cancel? You can only cancel if each thing on top has a factor on the bottom. So this one and this one don't just cancel out without this one also canceling out. That's why I specifically rewrote it. Like I skipped a couple of steps, but essentially before you do the canceling, you need to take out the common factor of one root x. And then it only cancels out technically one time, but I skipped this step and I just canceled it out like here. But you see it ends up with the same result. Anyways, submit the answer, three, and then tell me how you did, because I'm gonna wait for a confirmation. There you go. Everything's good. Ugh. So I'm going to call it here because the stream has been going on. And yeah, don't feel bad about these like really obscure techniques. Ugh, that's so stupid. Really stupid. I have no idea if your exam is going to be asking these types of questions. But this one was just hella lame but anyways I'm gonna close up uh, thank you guys for watching uh, thanks for joining me especially on my first affiliate stream lots of people came by I had two subscribers and a decent amount of viewers today so yeah I don't know I'll think about doing video game streams because I thought it would be fun to play some like puzzle games on on here because as you said rgbt it would be good if we enforce logical thinking and i think games you know they're not as robust as mathematics but they get the point across right you have your set of axioms and which are your game rules especially in puzzle games and then you apply the axioms in different situations logically to solve puzzles so I think games are, puzzle games are a pretty natural, like, lateral move from math, you know? Discord, uh... Maxime is working on the Discord, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, easiest way to learn logic, but like, a good way to practice logic is through video games. You don't want to hear RGBT talk in real life? What happens if he has like a really like cool voice? You're not sure you haven't played games like those? Yeah. So I don't know. I really want to try a portal. I want to try out Baba as you. I think you would honestly enjoy Baba as you. So I don't know what I'll try first. I'll try Baba as you. Because I, I know what the game's about, and I think it's pretty cool. So hopefully you'll join me when that happens. I don't know when that'll happen. Maybe Sunday. You know what? I'll look into playing Baba as you on Sunday. Of course, uh, math help, right? Feel free to still ch answer or ask questions in the chat. I'll just pause the game and then help you out with math here. Anyways. Thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.